Hello friends, welcome to Zeta Axis and today we will discuss different types of earth building forces. Now there are different processes occurring inside our earth which leads to formation of mountains, formation of valleys, destruction of mountains, formation of trenches, volcanism. So all these happen because of there are different forces acting within our earth. These forces can be classified into different groups. Here you can see the list of all the forces acting inside our earth and we have placed them in their respective groups. Today we will discuss all of these forces. So let's start. In the beginning we will see the general characteristics of these forces. So these forces are basically responsible for creating, destroying or maintaining geomaterials. They are the main force which cause the creation of Himalayas or Alps. They are also the forces which cause the decline of mountains like our Aravlis. They can change the shape of our earth. We can see that mountains are formed on the surface of our earth. Then there are trenches are formed on the surface of earth. So these forces can really shape our earth. These forces can be manifested in few seconds like earthquakes or volcanoes or they can take millions of time like our formation of Himalayas which took several millions of years. Because of these forces, the earth's surface is always dynamic. We can see that new kind of forms are created at one place while at other places old forms are destroyed. Now where do these forces come from? What is the source of energy for these forces? So let's see them. The first is decay of radioactive elements within our earth. So there are a large number of radioactive elements within our earth and when they decay, they give out heat. This is one of the source of these forces. The second is residual or primordial heat. These are the heats which were created when during the formation of our earth. Once our outer surface of our earth solidified, the heat from the creation of our earth got locked inside our earth. That heat is called primordial heat. Then we have tidal forces which create friction. These are the forces created by the gravitational forces of sun and moon. So let's see them in details. Now the first major source of energy for the endogenic forces comes from the radioactive elements inside our earth. These radioactive elements are unevenly distributed and when they decay, they release heat. The areas where these forces are concentrated, they release large amount of heat because of which the mantle here melts, it rises up, it reaches the asthenosphere, moves horizontally and then cools down and comes back and the cycle continues. This continuous cycle of magma provides energy for the overlying tectonic plates. Now another important source for energy of endogenic forces is the primordial heat. As you can see when earth was formed, it was a hot ball of molten rocks. Over the time these rocks started to cool down. When they cooled down, the outer surface cooled down first and it formed a layer which was poor conductor of heat. This trapped the heat inside the earth because this layer did not allow the interior heat to go outside. And that is why this heat is trapped inside our earth and it is the major source of endogenic forces. This is the source of energy for plate movements, volcanism, magnetic fields even, earthquakes, geysers, so all the geological phenomena are powered by this primordial heat. Another important source of heat is tidal force of sun and moon. What happens when the earth rotates around the sun, we see that it revolves around an elliptical path. On the elliptical path, it is closest to sun at one location while furthest away from the sun at another location. Gravitational force is minimum here, but maximum here. So the gravitational force varies on the earth and due to which we can see that there is slight change in the shape of our earth. Here it is more relaxed while here it is little compressed. So because of this variation in the gravitational force due to variation in the distance, there is continuous stretching and squeezing of our earth. Because of which different layers of our earth are stretched against each other causing friction and this friction releases lot of heat. A very similar phenomena occurs due to revolution of moon around our earth. It squeezes as well as stretches the parts of earth which are closer and furthest away from the moon. And so both the sun and moon apply a tidal force on our earth due to which the stretching and squeezing occurs which causes friction within the earth layers generating a large amount of heat. Now let's see classification of forces. The forces can be broadly classified into endogenic and exogenic forces. The word endo means within or inside and the word exo means outside. So the endogenic forces are the forces that act 
from within the earth while the exogenic forces are the forces which act from outside the earth now the main source of exogenic forces is the atmosphere like the winds the hydrosphere in the form of our waters in the rivers and our oceans the cryosphere which is in the form of glaciers so these all are the sources of exogenic forces what these forces do is they basically cause denudation or weathering away of structures created by other forces what they do they convert a mountain into a plateau a plateau into a plain and that is why they destroy the geological structures and that is why we call them destructive forces so all kind of exogenic forces are destructive forces now what are the major erosive forces water in the rainfall sea waves or rivers the glacier movement the air the wind energy and the ground water these are the major erosive forces of exogenic forces now these forces also form some kind of landforms the source where they erode the landforms they form erosional landforms while where they deposit the sediments created by erosion they form depositional landforms however let's see endogenic forces endo means within therefore endogenic forces mean any force from within or inside of the earth now we have already seen the three sources of heat which are the source of all these endogenic forces because of the sources of heat what happens that a convection cell of magma is continuously going on we have seen that the magma continuously rises up it flows horizontally in the asthenosphere cools down goes back and then again rises back so this cycle continues and it, this cycle of magma empowers a lot of processes on the surface of our earth similarly what happens that hot plume of magma rises from within the mantle and it comes till the asthenosphere this is what we call as hot spots now because these forces create land masses on the surface of earth like the volcanoes create volcanic structures the hot spots also create mountains so we call them as a constructive forces because they are creating certain kind of landforms so they are earth building forces now these kind of forces can be sudden like volcanoes or earthquakes or they can be very slow they could be manifested in as much as billions or even millions of years these forces can have their effect in vertical direction as well as in horizontal direction endogenic forces are further divided into diastrophic forces and sudden forces sudden forces can be classified into volcanic forces or earthquake forces now sudden forces are the forces which are released within a quick span of time it would take from minutes to a day to release all this energy like in a volcano or in a earthquake even though this energy is released in a very short span the amount of time it takes to build this energy is very high it could take even millions of years for this energy to build up for example in the earthquakes the tension between the different plates would continue for several thousands of years similarly under a volcano the magma would accumulate for several thousands of years and it would come out in one instance so that is why it takes a lot of time for these forces to build up before they are released they form land masses very quickly for example a volcanic eruption would form a mountain in within days even earthquakes can change the shape of the landform within few seconds but these kind of forces have very small range they cannot affect a very large area but they affect only a very small area however these forces create certain structures on the surface of earth we call them constructive forces now remember all the endogenic forces are constructive forces we have already seen that the sudden forces are two types the first is the volcanic type where it creates volcanic cones mountains lava plateaus like deccan plateau so you can see that it creates a lot of landforms on the surface of our earth similarly we have earthquakes which create faults fractures it creates lakes and it also offset certain objects certain land masses so even it creates certain landforms on the structure of our earth now we have seen the sudden forces which release the energy in a matter of minutes or days but diastrophic forces are the forces which release the energy in millions or billions of years the effect of these forces is manifested in a very long time ranging from millions to billions of years these forces are caused by slow release of energy from earth for the example of movement of tectonic plates which very slowly move from one place to another 
Diastrophic forces like all endogenic forces are constructive forces. They create landforms like Himalayas, like Alps. They create trenches. So they create a lot of landforms on the surface of our earth. That is why we call them constructive forces. They affect a very large areas of land. So if you see the Himalayas, it is spread over a very large area, which is created by the collision of two tectonic plates. Similarly, Andes or Alps, you can see that they are spread over very large areas. So the diastrophic forces affect a very large areas, whereas sudden forces affect only small areas. Now, diastrophic forces can be of two types. One force which causes only vertical movement. It could be the up or down. The other types of forces are which cause only horizontal movement. They could be the tensional force which pulls a landmass apart or compressional force. Now based on this, diastrophic forces can be classified into two types. Epirogenetic forces which cause vertical movement and orogenic forces which cause horizontal movement. We will see both of them in detail. Epirogenic forces means continent building forces. Epirios means continent and genesis means building or origin. Now these forces have very slow manifestation. They could take millions or even billions of years for their effects to be visible. They act radially along the earth radius and they cause movement only in the vertical direction. So if you take this point, you can see that the force will act only radially. That is in the direction of the radius and they will cause movements only in the vertical direction. That is either it will push it up or it will force it down. Formation of creatons is one example of epigenic movements. Here a mental plume starts from the interior side of the earth comes to the crust, it starts to melt the crust and then some crustal shortening occurs and we see formation of a craton. Craton formation is a very good example of vertical movement. You can see that there was only radial movement, no horizontal movement was involved. Now the landforms which are created by this process, they are mostly flat. They do not have folds or fractures like all other structures have which are created by horizontal movement. The undulations are very smooth and they are of very high wavelength which means that there will be a large distance between two undulations. Craton are part of each continent and they are the stable most part of the continents and they are very very difficult to subduct even the oldest rocks on the surface of earth can be found in cratons. This is the world map and you can see where these cratons are located so you can see that the cratons uh, form part of almost each continent and they are the oldest part of these continents. Isostasy is also a form of epigenic movement. What isostasy says is each landmass due to its weight applies a downward force. This downward force we have represented by gravity and this downward force is balanced by an upward force which we have represented by buoyancy. Now at all these points both of these forces must be in balance. Here you can see that the land mass above the surface of earth is higher. So its weight must be higher, so its gravity must be higher. So to counteract it, the buoyancy must be higher and for that we see that some extra land mass is present in the asthenosphere. Now suppose if the peak gets eroded due to erosion, what will happen? Its weight will reduce. So the gravity will reduce. Now because of this reduction in gravity, what happens that the buoyancy increases and it will push this landform a little upper and there will be a little increase in height of this landform because of this disbalance between the gravity and buoyancy. This is what we call as isostasy and it is also an example of epigenic movement. Now here we have another example of isostasy where we see a mountain block and here we see that because of isostasy the land mass extends deeper in the asthenosphere. Now what happens if this glacier moves away, if it melts away, the weight of this mountain will reduce and because of this the downward force of the gravity will reduce and due to this the buoyancy increases and there will be a slight increase in the height of the mountain because the buoyancy was higher than the gravity due to the melting away of the glaciers. So you can have seen that the isostasy causes a vertical movement. Now here is an example of epirogenic movement where we can see the upliftment of continental blocks. So it can occur in two ways. Here the continental crust is moving upwards while here 
the oceanic crust is moving downwards. In both of these cases, the apparent effect is that the continental crust is moving upwards. Here we can see because the oceanic crust is moving downwards, the coastal regions are coming out of water and that is why we call it an emergence. Here the whole continental crust is moving up, therefore the coastal margins are also coming out of the water. So in both the cases, we see that the continental landmass is apparently coming up. However, in one the continental landmass is uplifted, in other the oceanic landmass is subsided. Now in a similar way, the downward movement of continents could occur in two ways. The first is subsidence of the land area. So here you can see that whole of this land area is moving downwards and therefore the whole of this region is coming under water. This is called subsidence. In the other example what we see that the continental crust is moving upwards and that is why the water level is rising and all of the coastal areas are coming under water. So that is what you call as submergence. Now we will see orogenic forces. Orogenic forces can be divided into two parts. Tensional forces as well as compressional forces. Tensional forces are the forces which pull apart, they create fractures. Compressional forces are the forces which compress, they create crustal bending. Now, like the epirogenic forces which acted in vertical direction, the orogenic forces only act in the horizontal direction. Orogeny means mountain building. The word oro means mountain and geny means building. So the word orogeny means mountain building. These are the primary mechanisms by which mountains are built. That is two continents or two plates would come towards each other and the margin of these plates we see formation of mountains. Therefore they always act around the faults. The reasons where this process of mountain building is going on is called orogenic belt. Because of this process there is a large amount of crustal deformations. We see that certain areas are lifted up, there is bending in certain land masses. So there is a lot of crustal deformations. But new continental crusts are also formed mainly by the process of volcanoes and island arcs. So volcanic activity occurs when two plates come together. And this act volcanic activity adds to the continental landmass. Here we can see a tensional force. This is a landmass and this tensional force is trying to pull it apart. So we can see formation of fracture here. While this is an example of compressional forces, here on both sides the forces are trying to compress this landmass and we see that certain kind of folding or warping is occurring. Notes for all the topics that we discussed will be available on our website zeta-access.com. Thanks for watching the video and if you like the video please like, subscribe and share. If you like our effort and like what we are doing then you can use our UPI ID or Patreon ID to support us. You can follow us on our social media links. Until then we meet again. Jai Bharat, Jai Gyan. Thank you.